We're doing something different now here. We're going to have an open discussion. Uh, we have some time left, so we're opening up to anything anybody would like to talk about. I was hoping our state representative here tonight would be a perfect opportunity to open up for. Go right ahead. Um, you know, again, as a business owner and a resident, I, I always see there's a little. Why don't you say who you are? Damien Di Paolo, uh, Vito's and Damiano's. Okay. Um, and I live on three. I live at one lateral place. Um, I think there's, there has to be a crackdown on landlords. I'm a landlord. Uh, I have a couple of properties. To, to really police the garbage of the residents. I am on Hanover Street and Salem Street every day. And for the most part, commercial garbage is in sealed containers, in sealed bags, nice and neat. The residents are making a huge, huge mess. And all the energy we spend on attacking the businesses some of that energy should be directed towards, and the residents don't care, it's a landlord. I have the garbage enforcement right on my speed dial. Whenever I see garbage outside, I call them right away. I give them the address. For the most part, they show up, but people need to do that. Have their phone number here. When you see garbage in the street, call them. I don't want to say they're 100% of the time they show up, but you know, if you keep calling them, they do show up. But also, they don't. Uh, tear the garbage apart and find yes, they do. I've seen them. I've seen guys go through the back. They go through the garbage. I've seen them do it. Most of them give it to the landlord. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, and I, and, and, and and I had to go in and I found that the, that the tenants that have thrown them out. Yeah. The landlord is the one that gets fined. The landlord should yeah. get fined. No, they shouldn't. You know why the landlord should get fined? Because that's the only way it's going to happen. I make sure my tenants throw the garbage out on the days they're supposed to throw it out. And then, by the way, I see a lot of that. I see garbage out on, we, we on Tuesday them. afternoons. Let me finish, please. On Thursday afternoons, I, I see it out when it's not supposed to be out. And it is up to the landlord of the building, and I'm a landlord, to make sure their tenants don't do that. Otherwise, it's not going to get resolved. When you have somebody else put it in front of your building. Now, this happens in front of the last quarter. They have to have proof that it's the garbage from I, your building, and I, they do go, as this gentleman said, I've seen I've it go gone inside through, the bags. We've gone through a whole box of other clubs that I use, and, and it's... Never mind. It's Our garbage problem is a big result of the residents of this neighborhood. So and it, it's the transient it residents it who don't give a shit about the neighborhood. Damien, did you tend the uh, cell uh, La Martina had, a, had some hearings specifically on this problem? In these, in these I, I've attended those hearings. I've Where attended did you see uh, any bike hearings on motorcycles. No, I went I'm talking to about see the did you, Were you optimistic about anything you heard there? Not really. It's, what do you know? This is what they talk the about stuff. I mean, yeah. What's the solution? It has to be other cities that do this. Like, you know, some other innovative strategy that's worked in another city, you know, like where we're not just. People keep mentioning Beacon, Beacon Hill. I mean, Beacon. I'm not really lurking around Beacon Hill day right. and night, so I don't know what they, if they do have a garbage problem. But people keep saying how there's no big garbage problem on Beacon Hill. Well, they have morning put outs, right? They have 5 a.m. put outs. We have. They're not mandatory. Not mandatory? No, the pressure from. Like if I live next door to Stephanie and Stephanie's putting her trash out at six o'clock at night and I'm putting mine out at six o'clock in the morning, yeah. I'm pressuring Stephanie to put it out at six o'clock in the morning. It's more of a peer pressure. And we've we've tried that here in the ground leaving food. We yeah. we did We're not gonna solve the rap on a garbage out when they're Five feeding. Block, I mean, oh my god, are you kidding me? What so is that a question? What when is this community all gonna come together between nobody's gonna leave. The residents they're not going to leave. The, the businesses are not going to leave. The neighborhood is not going to leave. One of these three boards going to come together as one board, have four people from each department representing so that someone that's opening a new business, all right, will go up in front of, like we did tonight, and, and just go there once a month and have this meeting once a month, and everybody can ask all the questions that they want to ask. I mean, it, do you realize that if you're opening a business in the North End, which is totally against business as far as I'm concerned, because if you're opening a business in the North End, you're, you're trying to get approval from Nora, which you have to go into a pilot house and you have to go to another meeting. Mm -hmm. You have to go to Munich, all right, one meeting, all right? Of course, you have to have an attorney, and they're, they're not cheap today. Right? You know, they're not paying in this all right? But, but then you have to go, then you have to go in front of zoning. You might have to go in front of uh, licensing. You might have to go in front of entertainment. You might have to, you know, it becomes very, very expensive to open up a business in the North End. What is this community? And everybody, every time I hear about trash and getting back to trash, I hear the blame is the, the businesses. And then I hear the blame is the residents. And then I hear the blame is someone else, the, the landlords. 
I mean, we, we've been at this, and I've been hearing this same talk for, for, for the last, you know, since 1987 that I opened up my first business in the North Bend, and it's continuous. I mean, when are we all going to get together and become one board, one people, for the love of the North Bend? When, I really, really believe it's about time that someone should sit at a table and have four members from Munich, four members from uh, Nora, and four members from the Chamber of Commerce just for, for the petitioner that has to go in front of them instead of wasting all this time, this money, and this energy, all right, to go in front of all these different boards and you have to say the same thing 10, 15 different times. It, it's, a sin, it's a sin to a community such as this, and I think it's about time that we all wake up and make it one community, so not that. Kathleen, do you have something you want to say? I thought you had to get some point, but I'm sorry. I, if, if, I I could just, if I could take it just one step further, if I may, I, I, I don't mean apologize. to take up all your time, but that does not mean that Nora and Nunick and the Chamber of Commerce does not exist. And then, just to take it one step further, then the month later, a month after, they would all come back and they would give a vote from each one of the boards. They would go back to their own groups and vote whichever way they do. Some vote in a, a pink box, some vote with their hands, some vote by just making a decision at the moment. Okay, but, you know, I think it would save so much time and energy and, and, and whatever to try to really build this neighborhood. Because this is a great neighborhood. This is a one-of-a-kind neighborhood. And it seems like every time I, they, they talk about the chamber, they might say something bad. Or they talk about Nora, they might say something bad. Or they talk about Munich, and they might say something bad. That doesn't mean that you don't have your same president, your same vice president, and your same board. You might have your 15-member board. We might have our, our eight-member board. They might have their six-member board. But you come back, and you cast a vote. And that vote would go to City Hall, three different letters, and that's the way you vote, but just to save the time and the energy for the petitioner. Go ahead, Stephanie. Well, no, I'd like to suggest that there already is an opportunity in the North End for all of us to sit and vet an application. The ZLC meetings are open, and Bill and Marie came last month, which we were very glad that they did, uh, and anybody can come. I think we can use the ZLC meetings to vet the applications, to get the neighbors there if they have questions, issues, and the purpose of the ZLC meeting is really to make sure that neighbors have been notified and have an opportunity to speak, and any issues, and it does happen sometimes, that a neighbor pops up with an issue and then people have a chance to work it out ahead of time before it ever comes to the general meeting or a vote. So we don't have to form another council. We already have a vehicle is that, is that, that we could use. Is that a caption that's a new it's, it's the Zoning Licensing and Construction Committee of Newry, yes, but it's, op it's open to the public. I'm saying not that. No, yes. I and I appreciate the streamline it all. Even if you did that, then you still have to go to the other two meetings. Yeah. So Howard like, Spiker did that. He, so he's suggesting today. that you shot short the process a little bit. You made one pieces. presentation once to yeah. all the yeah. boards. It just yeah. makes too much sense. Yeah. The boards discuss it, they vote on it, and that's it. I mean, it makes sense, but we've been talking about this for five, six and years. Do, do you realize, well, excuse me, but do you realize that if, you know, like clean streets or public safety, Damien. that if Damien, we all work together, I think, honestly, it would be a greater result for the better of this neighborhood. And the committees are open to, we have people on clean streets who do not belong. No, but there's to people from the other boards that do not attend that because like, they feel that these different boards are segregated to their own. So I think that if ever there was, like what I just said a few minutes ago, I don't want to go through that again. But if, but, if, but if we all work together for clean streets, I know I clean in front of my restaurants. I haven't gotten an award yet, and I'm waiting for it. <laughs> But, but I'll tell you, I do a lot of cleaning. And it, it seems like it's always me scrubbing to try to teach you. But I hope you get an award someday. But, but, okay, okay. But, but if we all work together, all right, for, to, to tackle this trash problem, this rat uh, problem, this, this uh, you know, uh, tra uh, everything, all these different problems that we have in the North End, I think it would just make this North End a better community. We all work as one body, one, one group, 
and it would make it so much easier. I, honestly, I'm petrified when I have to come in front of these boys. I'm petrified. I turn white. My wife says to me, what's the matter with you today? You know what's the matter with me today? I have to go in front of the board again for something. Well, okay, uh, and I, I if, don't like it. I mean, but if we went once, it would just eliminate that whole thing. If we want to work together on yeah. issues, there's a Clean Streets exactly. Committee meeting Tuesday night. I've been, I've been to three of them, but can I tell you the honest to God truth? Mm -hmm. What happened? I came with my wife to three of them. And we are still talking about the same thing. At least Damon is still talking about the same thing, and I'm still talking about the same thing. <laughs> Today I walked by, I walked by um, Toronto Restaurant. And I don't know the big chef there, what his name is, but he's, he's a nice guy there. Um, Jose. 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 Jose said to me, and he, he's screaming, talking to himself. And he's saying that the building next door threw out all this trash, all this I beer cartons, and, and he was steaming. He was steaming. He says, the next time I'm getting it and I'm putting it right in front of their door. Well, you know something? It's a constant problem. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about these same rats for the longest time. They must be mother rats by now. Okay? I mean, they, they were babies and now they became gigantic. I mean, we, we have to start working together. I mean, honestly, I love everybody at this moment. All right? But it seems to me like when I, I see them outside, like, they're looking at what I'm doing. I, I'm not selling drugs. I'm working. I'm working. I'm up at 6 in the morning working. I'm not selling drugs to become who I am or to support my family. I'm here working. And I think anybody, if we all just work together, we will get so much accomplished. But every time that someone has to go, I know, and he just happened to leave, I, I know Dana said, I ain't going in front of that. Well, I ain't doing this. I'm not, I, I'm not going to be insulted. I'm not, you know, sometimes I sat in front of boards, and I'm not going to say which ones, and I've been out and out insulted for being a working man. All right, I came to this country in 1955 on the real banana boat, all right, and I worked every single day to give my family a better life. There should not be three boards in the North End. There should not be three different groups in the North End. And we also have a few more. I think it's the Freedom Trail group and a few others. I mean, it should be all us, all is one. And, and that's why I stayed. I could have left after I hear it. But I'm here, and I really, really feel big. I love this North End. I, nobody loves this North End as much as me. I give back to the North End. I give back to the people. I started my own foundation because, honestly, it's, you know, from Casa Monte Casino to you name it. And I will support everything across the board. But you know, it's about time that we all come together. Billy, you want to say something? Oh, I want to say something about trash. No, oh, about okay. trash. Okay, go ahead. A suggestion that I've made. I understand that there is now a new type of plastic bag that is supposed to be rodent resistant. It's treated with some sort of a chemical odor of some sort. My suggestion would be that the city have the bags sold to landlords who in turn can sell them or give them to tenants so that the requirement that only that bag be used. So instead of random bags that you go and you buy at the store, which was the store, uh, if, if they bought them in bulk, you could keep the cost out, and then you distribute them to the landlords mm -hmm. by the hundreds mm -hmm. uh, at whatever the fee is, mm -hmm. and then the landlord would turn to the site. We'd have to raise free. the rent. Well, I'm saying you get it for free or you buy the bag. You know, you know what it's I mean? It's so ignorant, it's, these tenants, it's, that they it's, won't it's even one consider that. But, you know, I mean, the only enforcement that has to be the Sorry. So, so there's a cost involved. Well, well, with the recycle bags. But I, I will tell you, back a couple of years ago, when everyone was complaining, the inspectors were down every single day. They, they walked the streets back and forth. I haven't seen them thank, thank you very much. So, you can I mean, it can't, it can't be enforced. That uh, the nursing home on Boston, the Golden Goose on Commercial Street. You go there Sunday at four o'clock. Yes. And it's high. But it's yes. a disgrace. It happens to be owned by the city of Boston. I know that. It's, it's disgrace. The city of Boston. It's terrible. Sometimes I go to twelve o'clock mass and I can walk into it. So can I can I report to what Frank said and I and also you know the fact that Stephanie is here and the fact that we have made a, a, a dedicated effort to to go to ZLC meetings and um, um, Marie tries to always also go to the membership meetings which I can't always attend. I attend those as well. Yeah, and so does Donna. I think there's a growing, I you know there may have been some more corrosive atmosphere between the two groups or uh, the chamber has not really been part of this 
Well, we don't vote. We don't vote right. on people's so petitions. So I'm talking only about we have a right to exist in this neighborhood. There might have been a time when it was more antagonistic. I think that's breaking down. And I, I see I see progress toward perhaps you know some more amity between the groups that could cause some change over time. Under Donna's leadership, I think under Stephanie's leadership, things have softened considerably between the two groups. I think. I still think we do have to take a step back and look at the process and we're asking people to yeah. agree. You know, and we discussed that. We don't cost money, it costs time. We've discussed that. It takes a lot of time to go out front of these four times. You mentioned violence before. I'll, I'll give you an interesting piece of history. The original violence in Chicago was about 13 neighborhoods, all 13 neighborhood uh, councils were created. The only neighborhood that didn't have a council was Beacon Hill, because Beacon Hill yeah, was always a civic association. And so they opted not to have uh, a neighborhood council. I just want to make a comment that before I became president of Munich, um, Frank actually did talk to me one day as I was walking down Hanover Street about this whole concept of having um, one group to vet all these issues, and it would obviously be another council would be not newer and not noon it could be yeah, however it's not whatever whatever i know no wait just let me finish and stephanie and i as many people know have been working closely together to try to work on whatever issues that we can um in in, in a cooperative manner and to work you know is because we all want a unified voice of the north then because that's the best and the most productive way to get things done if we are together we're always going to have differences of opinion. We have differences of opinion within Munich, and they have differences of opinion at Nura. You see the votes. It's not always um, unanimous. So no matter what system we set up, um, you know, this is always going to be a division. But what Frank is asking for is, in, and I think it's a legitimate request, is for us to look at the process and how we can best streamline it. I'm not sure what the answer is right now, but just right now in the process of talking, I can honestly say that Stephanie and I have been talking about these types of issues and the step is in the right direction. I think people are noticing that the two neighborhood groups are working together. The mere fact that we uh, folks from Nunick are going to Newer, Newer is coming to Nunick. Um, we, we have people from Newer coming to public safety meetings and in, in turn, Newer people are coming to the zoning, but this is a separate issue. Just you're for talking. The you're Just for I understand. The I understand what, what you're saying, and that's going to take time to work that out because, as Stephanie points out, the ZLC for Newer vets that, 
and we as a, a board, that's what we're doing at our meetings, is vetting it. So it's, we have to really think this out. I'm not saying it's not a good idea, because I totally hear you in terms of the cost that's involved, the time, et cetera, to the petitioner to go to the ZLC, then the newer meeting, then the NUNIC meeting. I understand that. I Plus really the do. the mailings. I understand. I understand. For both groups. Yes. So no, I understand. It it's it's so much easier. And, and everybody would have a voice. The whole community would have a voice. And oh, I'm sorry. No, we, no, 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 that's okay. We do hear you. Go ahead. Finish, finish your question. The, the whole community would have a voice. I mean, we're here, and, and I don't believe that anybody is looking to leave. Any, any of the businesses are looking to mm -hmm. stay. Mm -hmm. it, it is a community of business. It's a community of residents. Mm -hmm. It's a community of... Uh, it, it's a neighborhood. Yeah. It's, it's a neighborhood. And I, I don't see why we can't have a 12-member board with four people from each unit just for the petitioner. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then everybody goes to, I'll go back to the Chamber of Commerce, go back to Lunick, go back to Nora, and, and everybody votes the way they want to vote. No, I, I hear you. And, I then, and then that letter... 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, and then that letter, the three different letters, not that letter, the three different letters would go to City Hall and, and for whatever you're petitioning for, and it would save so much time, so much aggravation. You know how many people, I mean, especially with the economy the way it is, you know how many people are afraid to come to the North End because they're afraid of it? And so many different boards and so many different things. I mean, they, they're afraid. They, they want to come into the North End, but they don't want to come into the North End because they don't want to be humiliated. They don't want to be questioned by so many different boards, and everybody asked, basically everybody asked the same question. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, it's really the same questions over and over and over again. It's like, it, it's just so repetitious, it's ridiculous. So you don't mind, just for a little bit. I just want to ask this question because between the North End historian, Bill Ferruo, and Stephanie and Nicole. Is, does Nura have like a charm for the city, or? No. 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 I, my understanding is that what Anne was saying before, it is correct that NUBRA was started by residents who were not happy with their representation and wanted a direct voice. I will tell you, when I came to the neighborhood and started getting involved, NUBRA appealed to me because it was an organization where I could vote directly. So part of what we're talking about here is organizations of a different nature. You are an elected representative body. NUBRA is a democracy. As president of NUBRA, I can't make a, a decision that binds NURA. I have to take things to a membership for a vote. That being said, I think there's plenty of room for cooperation between the council to work on neighborhood issues, and we have a lot of issues. I think it's a very natural uh, partnership for the council and the leadership that, that you represent to partner with the people in the neighborhood who are the residents who are the most active, and they demonstrate that by coming to meetings, coming out, getting involved in committee work. So I think there's, there's, there's a synergy there. There's an opportunity for us to work together on a lot of these issues. Um, I think instead of picking a solution and saying, let's have one body, it would be better for us to take the concerns of the businesses, and Donna and I have already started talking. And I think organically, both groups being sensitive to what the problems of the business community are, we can work towards something that's going to lower the costs of presenting to the neighborhood and getting support. But I think given the nature of the two groups, we shouldn't try to spend a lot of time and energy forcing a solution which is really, especially in the case of NURA, distorting what the organization is. Because to have representatives come, sit, and then go back and report to the group, you know, maybe we can work towards something like that, but that's a real change in the way that NURA operates and what NURA is meant to be. Well, it's a change for NUNIC as well, because yeah. We are the ZLC for NUNIC, our whole... Uh, right, and the reason I brought up the ZLC <coughs> was because maybe the first step would be using that ZLC meeting. 
but not and one body. No, no I not one body. No, no, no. It's only for the petitioner. You still have your body. They have their saying, body. We saying, have our I, body. I understand, I understand what you're saying. One body. one body. And I'm saying, I think, Just for the petitioner, we'll no, end up mind. focusing a lot of time and effort on trying to come up with that one body. And you know what the, this neighborhood's like. Uh, and any large group of people, you're never going to get total agreement. And I think the last thing we want right now, or we've taken some steps toward working together, is to get into a situation that's going to have people fighting over process, rather than just trying to work things through so that we can lower costs for business people coming before us. They tried and if it didn't work, they went on a trial basis. I'm, you know. In other both bodies happen to be Democrat. Regardless of one considering himself to be Democrat, it's a different methodology. Otherwise, our legislature and Congress wouldn't be considered to be Democratic. It's you know, elected by the people. The example would be in small towns, they have town meeting. You go to town meeting, you hold up your hand. In the city of Boston, we don't have town meeting. It may take something more than the Greenway to hold everyone in the city of Boston to hold up their hand. So you have an elected party. So doesn't mean one's more democratic than the other. And it that, just means that it operates in a different form. That wasn't what I meant. Well, uh, that's that's a that's a catchphrase that that Nora likes to use. They're the only democratic body. I didn't which, say only. I said these. This is this is an elected just, representative body, which I'm is certainly a democratic I'm process. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying there's different process for each body. It yeah. doesn't mean that it's not democratic or one is better than the other. All Frank is saying. However you want to do it, by a show of hands, a box, or whatever, let your organization do it however they want to do it. But for the purpose of vetting the issue, like tonight, if you only had to do this for once, and the members of the ZLC are here, and the members of the council are here, and you do it, and then they go back and they give a report to their organization, and they vote accordingly, that, that's what Frank is saying, as opposed to a three-party, go to three meetings, and so you would have be, no life. You so. would be comfortable not coming before the newer membership to present your case. If we had no, a ZLC no, no, no. committee we, we, we member, be, let, let me, let, I, I just want to finish. If we had a ZLC committee member who presented your petition to the newer membership for their vote, and, and you didn't even have to be here, I had to be here. I'm, I'm saying you would have four people from this board. You would have four people from your board. You would have four people from the chamber representing business. And then when someone comes to petition for whatever they want, all right, they they there would be no vote that night. Now you would do your vote the way you you do your vote. You would have your own separate meeting maybe before the next month and have a vote and you decide if if you're in favor or against. And you would have a letter in favor or against. You would vote the way you would normally vote. I think it's you, you leave a slip or whatever, and, and you know, and you would vote your way. The chamber, the, the chamber would vote the way we vote, and and then city hall would get one letter because it, it's so embarrassing sometimes when you go in front of city hall and the first thing that uh, Mr. Shotsley from the ZBA says, or uh, uh, Patricia Malone, or uh, or uh, um, uh, Nicole, Nicole Ferrara would say, is, have you been in front of the, the neighborhood? Well, yes, we've been in front of the, so many different neighborhood boards, I don't even know where to go anymore. Yes, we have been in front of them, okay? But, you know, we, we, for respect to the neighborhood, I don't only come here, I'm coming to your board. And I'm asking, well, I happen to be the, the chairman of the Chamber of Commerce, but I, I'm asking my other members from the Chamber, do you agree with my petition? Okay, now, a letter goes from us, and that's the way we do it. Maybe a vote comes from you, which is in the box, and that's the way you do it. And a raise of hands comes from you, and that's the way you do it. But the petitioner only has to go there once and plead his case. Then everybody still has, Norbert is still exists, you know, Nunick still exists, and the Chamber of Commerce still exists. But it would be, it, it would be to everybody's advantage to have us all work together as one body once we're out of this hearing room. All right, now for Clean Streets, for instance, I've come here three times, like I said, there was four people here yeah. for Clean Streets. It's ridiculous. And if I wasn't here, there'd be two. All right, 
I mean, sometimes I go to these meetings, even the, the, the way the chamber meetings were before, and I see so many people. The only time people come to all these three different boards, you know what it is? When it's something that they can bite their teeth into. It's like sharks almost, and it's... Or free and, food. Or free food, okay? <laughs> and, and I think it's about time that we just think about it, and it's, I, I just threw it up for discussion, that's all. Well, I think it's something to be thought of, just like when we're looking at our bylaws, uh, but it's not an easy solution okay. because, as you know, that a baseball focuses, you know, I'm not saying it's not good.